watched the world fade out of sight. Seen the ghosts of time preside, eagles soared and falcons cried. Sleeping phoenix on the rise. Abundance and strange the skies. Strange the skies. Hello, and welcome to Phoenix Rising. Warning, warning. What's coming up is not New Year's. You know, I've been doing this for many, many years now. December 31st is not New Year's. It is the change of the calendar that we use. There's no question about that. Obviously, we're going to enter into 2011, leave 2010 behind. And because of the time of the year and its ancient, literally, associations with festivals that have always been part of what we are, this is a time for celebration and it is a time for um, uh, the so-called holiday season. But keep in mind, it's not the end of the year and that's something that's really important psychologically. The fact is that if you look at the new year and the changeover to 2011, you'll see that it really takes place in a field of real confrontation and the, the dilemmas that can arise out of that. And it doesn't open up the window to something that's new. In fact, those people that are making their New Year's resolutions on, you know, some, somewhere in the middle of that whole New Year celebration, they're making all these resolutions about the way in which they want to begin their year and what they want to do. And yet it's not the end of the cycle and they can end up being very confused by those resolutions simply falling apart very quickly because things that need to have been dealt with and completed have not been completed. The Rave New Year is on January 22nd of 2011. And as I have done every year, I will offer a, a free online uh, analysis of the coming year and what there is there for all of us to expect from the program. Enjoy the holiday season from all of us at Jovian Archive Media. But don't be fooled, it's not the new year. And now, on with the show. Hello, and uh, welcome to the neutrino weather. And if you're a child and you're expecting Santa to come down the chimney, I'm sorry, he's reinvesting his funds in a new heating complex at his North Pole Resort. And that's the way that it goes, unfortunately. Well, I'm only kidding, sort of. But then again, we do have Pluto in the 58 too, and Pluto in the 58 too is really something. And of course, we do have the, the Sun in the 58 and the Earth in the 52, so we've got the conjunction that is there between Pluto and the Sun. But remember about the nature of the 58 too. It takes resources away from where the collective thinks the resources should go. And it places the resources somewhere else somewhere else, you know, so there's a lot of pent up uh, potential frustration and anger and bitterness about the fact that resources that are expected or resources that are assumed could be expected aren't going to show up. This is one of the things really to grasp about the 58 too, the way in which it changes the flow of energy necessary to work with the pattern, to work with the structure. So it's one of the main themes to keep in mind. Most of this week is really about the 58 because again, you're dealing with the sun and Pluto and this is a very powerful force. But the real thing to keep in mind is that as we get to new year and as we get to January the 1st, you know, we're stepping into a frequency of the 38 and the 39. That is, we're stepping into a frequency of opposition and obstruction. It's why I give this warning you know, all the time about the nature of the end of the calendar year. It's not the end of the year. It's not what this time is meant to be about in terms of, you know, looking over the past and reflecting and all of these things. There's a structure in this process as we lead up to the sun going into the 41st gate. And the 41st gate is the great initiating codon. It's out of the 41st gate that we get the whole theme of what it is to be human. We get the human experiential way, the 41 to the 30, to the 36, to the 35. Everything begins with the 41 and we're not there yet. So it's something to keep in mind about this week. It's something to understand about what's going on in the background because this Pluto transit is going to continue with Pluto in the 58 too. 
This is something that is going to impact this plane that we're living on. And not just simply, you know, the, the diversion of resources in, in the individual context that can be possible through this kind of a transit, but to see what's taking place in the world around us, in the societies around us, and the way in which this Pluto transit of the 58-2 is going to create a great deal of anxiety. So I need to keep in mind, we've got both Jupiter and Uranus that are there in the 36 gate, which is the gate of crisis. There's a tremendous amount of potential for crisis through this diversion of resources. And it's something we need to be aware of and keep in view. However, as I always like to say, if you're following your strategy and authority, the weather, whatever the weather may be, it truly is there for your pleasure, for your entertainment, for the movie.